What's going on guys, Dr. Michael Moeller, and I'm here today with a question that I get really often. Dr. Mo, what's the difference between testosterone, ACG, and Clomid in terms of hormonal optimization? Well, today I wanna to break that down. Now, the first thing that we wanna take into consideration is the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. And basically that's how our brain talks to our gonads. So here's our brain hypothalamus and we also have something called the pituitary gland the brain talks to the pituitary gland with a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone that tells the pituitary to release LH luteinizing hormone and FSH follicular stimulating hormone those go down to our testicles as guys, and then we produce testosterone and we produce sperm. Once our testosterone is released, it goes up to the brain, and then the brain says, okay, everyone's happy. So to keep things simple, the brain will ask for 10 testosterone, so it'll send 10 LH down and we get 10 back. Now everyone's happy. Now, in the case of what's called primary hypogonadism, it's when the testicles aren't giving the body enough testosterone. Now, this is a little bit of a debated area because as men age, their testosterone naturally declines. So in the case of hormonal optimization, what we do is we give the body a form of bioidentical testosterone. So this would be considered exogenous testosterone, meaning that it's coming from outside of the body. This is our endogenous testosterone, meaning it's being produced inside of the body. Now, the thing is when we start giving your body extra testosterone, the brain is gonna shut that signal down. It said, whoa, we asked for 10 and now we have 50. So the pituitary and the brain are gonna slow down gonadotropin releasing hormone, slow down LH and FSH. Now, there are some drawbacks to that. LH and FSH do do other things. Like I said earlier, they produce sperm. So if you start taking exogenous testosterone, it can decrease the amount of sperm you pr produce and actually decrease your testicular size and ejaculatory volume. So there's a couple ways that we can sidestep that. With my patients, especially in the younger guys, we can increase the signal from the brain. So something like Clomid, which is clomiphene citrate, actually comes up to the brain. It's a selective estrogen rece uh, receptor modulator, meaning it comes to the brain and it blocks the receptor. So the brain says, whoa, I didn't get any estrogen. I didn't, I didn't, I need to produce more. And so this hormone regulates testosterone and estrogen. So basically, when the brain says, whoa, I didn't get any of this, it increases how much of the gonadotropin releasing hormone that it puts out. That in turn increases LH and FSH, and then will increase testosterone. Now, if the body is unable to produce testosterone due to testicular damage or due to aging, the Clomid really won't help. Now. So that's the difference between Clomid and testosterone. Testosterone exogenously gives the body testosterone. Clomid blocks the signal and has the body produce more. Now, HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, mimics LH. So when we give our body an injection of HCG, the body has a hard time telling the difference between that and LH. So HCG goes into the body and does what LH does. So that will increase fertility and increase the tes testicular size. So again, wrapping up, testosterone is going to come from outside of the body and increase the testosterone on its own. Clomid is blocking the receptor on the brain and HCG is mimicking the LH hormone. I hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, this, if there's someone out there that you think would be interested in this video, please go ahead and share, please go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, or if you've used some of these before, uh, leave, leave a comment below. Thanks.